Hi everyone, it's day two of the Embedded World, uh, the yearly uh, event happening in Nuremberg, Germany. It's dedicated to embedded technologies, IoT and AI. Uh, we see a lot of interesting products uh, showcased at the exhibition, but today our focus will be at Supermicro and their cutting edge innovations in embedded systems, IoT and AI. Uh, we have here today with us uh, Matthias Hubert, uh, who's Senior Director uh, for Solution Management for Edge, AI and IoT. So, uh, Matthias, thank you. It's great uh, to have you here. And uh, we want to talk a bit more about the Supermicro journey, uh, about the events, you know, how it's going for you. Uh, I believe it's not the first year that you're exhibiting. Uh, and uh, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, well, I. Supermicro has been in the embedded world for many years now. I personally have come here since over 20 years. Yeah. So it's a uh, you know, uh, good old familiar. Why we keep coming back? I mean, Supermicro has a very wide range of products. Supermicro is probably better known for servers and most recently for large AI systems. That is the, it's like the bigger part of uh, Supermicro. However, we're very proud that we have a product portfolio that extends also into the mid-range, like the local data center, into mm -hmm. the into the far edge, or the on-prem mini data centers, okay. all the way down to single items for edge. Oh, sorry, listen. All the way down to single edge AI or edge devices. Mm -hmm. And Supermicro is the only manufacturer that has that whole coverage from basically building the cloud, building the data center, all the way to the edge device and we fabricate, design, and build everything in-house. We're the mm -hmm. only one of all the vendors that has that broad range with our own designs uh, today. And we have a very very good practice with embedded products. So we reach from, say, once you ask a data center, we cater to the needs of the products with short servers, still Xeon-based, multi-Xeon-based, but all the way down to a palm-sized Intel Atom-based media player type device and everything mm -hmm. in between. And Embedded World is it's the, the major show that still caters about embedded technology, mm -hmm. where it's about compute. And of course, it has morphed over the years from embedded into IoT, you now Edge and Edge AI. Mm -hmm. So we're working with a journey, and for us, it's super interesting because we are strong in AI. And all our products, a lot of our products, are made for AI and are capable. Mm -hmm. Where were we? Um, products made for AI. So we have products that cater into that AI use case, meaning mm -hmm. we have various CPUs to the mid and high range, but also have the capabilities to expand the products by adding either ASIC-based accelerators, either in M.2 or, or low-profile cards, all the way up to the usual NVIDIA A10, mm -hmm. uh, you know, RTX or L40 okay. type of video cards, and everything in between. So we can really cater to the use case needs in terms of how much CPU and how much GPU do we need to make that inference case happen? Okay, okay, great. And uh, how do you see the AI, you know, expanding and evolving? And what are Supermicro plans to, you know, keep up with this uh, development uh, for the next couple of years? What do you think is going to happen? So um, a couple of things are changing in the industry, and not all are. The compute power keeps increasing. So that's mm -hmm. one part. With that, you also have to manage the heat. So A, in the system design, you have to almost split it. One is CPU only, mm -hmm. and that's more for workload consolidation, network computing, security access, um, or just device control. So that's your CPU only. We have a lot of embedded fanless devices that can do that, all the way up to Xeon D8 core, which actually runs in your demo. Um, but also then we have another set of systems that are the ones that have expansions for the AI, meaning we can put the accelerator cards inside the system so we have enough power. Okay. The other trend that's happening is the manageability, mm -hmm. that you have to have the capability to manage your workloads. It yeah. uh, was talked about for a while, but now it's reality that the edge to cloud becomes very fluid. Yeah. And all new developments run on Kubernetes, they all expect to be, you know, basically cloud native, mm -hmm. but then you have to be able to deploy that to a local cluster, like you have like a three node uh, Kubernetes cluster on on-prem, but also you can manage down to the actual execution device where you run the inferencing at your machine, 
or on the edge gateway. Mm -hmm. And so that drives a need for manageability that we're addressing, we're working with strong software partners to ensure that we have the right, uh, uh, that the products are built the right way to enable that, meaning that they understand the right protocols, they have the right management capabilities mm -hmm. to allow that in the future. Because that, the days of build and deploy and update every five or 10 years, these days are gone. And the, even the, uh, in manufacturing and automation, which is very slow to adapt, even there it's now starting that they see the need that they have to be able to be fluid. Mm -hmm. So this is a thing that comes into the market now. It started a few years ago, but now we really see, really see a strong trend. Okay. Uh, and, you know, regarding IoT, and we have here a beautiful demo. Uh, like, what do you see the use of IoT and AI, you know, together? Maybe AI can somehow uh, you know, streamline or accelerate the development of IoT, and uh, yeah, what do, what do you think of that? Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of layers to that. So one of them is if you have a system that's just only say edge inferencing, that's very isolated. But there also it's like it has to be updated. They need to maintain it. They need to retrain the model every now and then. But usually it's a more complex setup. It's not just one thing. In a system, you should find more complex scenarios where you have to have some data management, you want to do some control element of it. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's a, a complex device. And in IoT, it's always a, a system from needing multiple layers. Like in, in the demo, it's actually very nice. We focus mm -hmm. on the digital twin aspect yeah. of it, to bring that forward, because that's a, a necessity now. So you can do either 3D simulations, you can build your data lake, so you can do your equipment optimization, you can mm -hmm. do predictive maintenance. All of that is one element. Then, but when you have the machine running, well, there's also an element of control, there's an element of, in this case, also inferencing. Yeah. So all of, often these things are starting to blend together, which means there needs to be a system integrator that has the understanding and capability to be, build each single item, but then also create a unified solution for the application. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in IoT, if I go back 10 years, there was this dream of having a one does it all software. Yeah. That is impossible. You can have large building blocks that are well known and uh, highly functioning and have the capability to provide, say, your predictive maintenance, mm -hmm. but you still need to configure it integrated into an existing network. Mm -hmm. And that's where strong partners like Car will always be needed to create that final product based on. AI technology based on the twin and of course based on supermicro hardware. Yes, absolutely. Uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more about this particular uh, computer that you're using, uh, the super server. So, it's like, in a typical scenario, actually there would be two systems running. Yeah. One would be more the gateway, the front end processing, as yeah. I call it. And this is the, uh, the front end unit. It's the uh, our E three hundred two line is our okay. fanless servers. In this mm -hmm. in this case, it's a Xeon D eight core. Mm -hmm. So it runs completely fanless, uh, zero to forty Celsius. Uh, for this demo, it runs everything. In the real world scenario, there would be a lot of the backend processing, like the data lake, the simulation, that would be on a separate server. Typically, our one U mm -hmm. uh, Xeon SP fifth gen, which is the uh, system one 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 E. And there's multiple variations of that, but that's sort of the mainstay of our edge compute for the backend. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in this demo, uh, as you see, the, there is all these four elements I mentioned, right? So you yeah. have inferencing to identify the object, find the you know the special one. In this case, yeah. a golden cube instead of like you know damaged product. It could be. We do the robotics control. We do the digital twin. We do the three D simulation, and okay. the robotic control all in one box. Okay. Great. Uh, uh, what do you think, like, for example, there's a use case for data center monitoring. Do you think uh, data center monitoring? Yes. Like, for example, uh, what do you think, can IoT be like a centralized uh, tool, you know, to monitor all of the data center operations and uh, just one of the use cases that, you know, um, came up. So in a typical data center, you have a lot of existing uh, protocols and infrastructure mm -hmm. for the device mo uh, lifecycle monitoring, right? Yeah. Like, a lot of stuff rides on top of IPMI. We have our own suite of uh, monitoring and management. Mm -hmm. That's for the individual device. Mm -hmm. Where there's a bit of a gap 
is actually when you go to one step higher on the rec level, yeah. on the data center level, including your air management. Air management, mm -hmm. so we're talking to a few companies actually, they're looking forward to add IoT to their air conditioning units and to the okay. water towers to create this end-to-end -end view of the entire data center, not just at the server level, you always go to the data center level. So this is one thing that's like, server companies are, I think working on it, but it's like, it's an, another layer of view you want to have, because you need to have it now because yeah. of the higher power consumptions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, taking time to talk to us. Uh, so we see the Supermicro has a wide range of interesting innovations and technologies and embedded systems and AI. And uh, yeah, thanks again for it. And on a personal note, I would like to thank Ka and the team to make this demo happen. This started with a initial conversation a few months ago. And thank saw, you for having us here. I, mean, I saw the video of this demo and I was excited and we recreated it. And I say thanks much. It's awesome. Thank you.